It is the Easter period after all, so Bristol City have a very quick turnaround and will be heading to Home Park to face a relegation-threatened Plymouth Argyle side. But don't be fooled, Plymouth still have some major qualities that Bristol City should be aware of. Here is how I think Bristol City will be getting on as we face Ian Foster's side this Easter Monday. Let's start with City's opponents then, Plymouth Argyle, and recently Argyle have been in dreadful form. They've only won one out of their last 10 league games, and that has all been under new manager Ian Foster. When Stephen Schumacher initially left for Stoke, they looked like they were fairly comfortable, and any sort of competent job with those group of players, they should be well away from any major relegation trouble. But with this recent dreadful run of form, and with the fact that teams below them have started to pick up some serious form as well. Plymouth have been dragged into a relegation battle for the ages. When Ian Foster initially took over, things looked fairly optimistic from an Argyle perspective. They carried on the momentum, which was left by Stephen Schumacher. They won an away game, which was not managed under Stephen Schumacher. They won 1-0 away at Swansea City with a goal from Morgan Whitaker. Surprise, surprise. They got a few impressive results, winning against Cardiff at home, be, uh, getting a draw away at Leeds. And things looked generally more optimistic. And after that, though, it's just completely turned. Things have turned very toxic at Home Park. The football has been really dour from what I've been hearing from the Argyle fan base. And he's just not getting the best out of the attacking players at his disposal. The likes of Morgan Whitaker, the likes of Ryan Hardy, the likes of Bally Mumba, some staff of Bundu. There are some good players there. He's not been helped by the fact that some of the lone players who are really impressive uh, have left, Luke Cundall being one of them. But he's also not helped himself by some of the press conferences and some of the general comments he's made about around the current group of players and just not being uh, very popular among the Argyle fan base. That's been a major reason that the Argyle fan base have turned on him and why Plymouth have been sucked into this absolutely disastrous relegation battle they currently find themselves in. Plymouth's last win came up against Middlesbrough away from home in a really impressive victory at the Riverside actually and a really good performance as well but since then they've played five games and they've lost four of them have only picked up one point and that one point came away at Blackburn who have been in really poor form recently and Blackburn were down to 10 men for the majority of that game at Ewood as well so they should have capitalised more from that game as well considering Blackburn are in and around Plymouth down at the bottom of the table. Last time out Plymouth they lost 2-1 at Norwich Again, in isolation, not a bad, not a terrible result, considering the fact that Norwich have been in really, really good form and are hunting for the playoffs themselves. So no shame in losing at Carroll Road. But with context, it's just a long string of really poor results that have that's just completely piled the pressure on Ian Foster. Last time Plymouth actually scored a home goal was against Coventry on the 14th of Feb. And that is a while ago. And they've played the likes of Preston, Ipswich, West Brom lead since and just haven't been able to find the back of, find the back of the net at Home Park. In fact, the last time they actually won a game at Home Park was on the 20th of January in Ian Foster's first league win. So, saying all of that on Plymouth and parking that to one side, this should be a fairly comfortable Bristol City win, shouldn't it? A fairly comfortable afternoon in Home Park, you know, on a Easter Monday, bank holiday. Nah. Of course. Not. Ah, of course it won't be because it is Bristol City and we all know what Bristol City are like when we come, against, come up against sides down near the bottom, definitely below us in the league table. We normally go and screw, screw it up. Um, that is what has happened. That's what the pattern has been this season as well, especially against sides who are probably going to sit in. Plymouth might not sit in to that same extent, but are definitely going to counter-attack on us with the pace they have up top. And Bristol City can't break teams down either, which is a massive issue. We... Couldn't break down QPR, Chef Wednesday, the same problem, Cardiff as well. We need to start making sure we, whenever whenever we come up against sides who are going to sit in and have a whole, hold a good structure, we need to be able to go and break them down. That is going to be the main challenge when we go to Home Park tomorrow. Against Leicester, we lined up with a five at the back with Hayden Roberts filling in with that left centre-back position to come into that uh, pretty stable back four, it looked like. Uh, Matty James came in uh, into midfield to replace Joe Williams, uh, who might actually go and start considering the fact it's a very quick turnover to this Argyle game. Scott Twine made his return. I'm not completely sure whether he's going to start considering the fact that he's also back from injury and maybe, actually maybe with the fact that he's had a couple of weeks and he made that sub appearance at West Brom, he might be given another start. Let me know your thoughts on whether Scott Twine will start uh, below. Tommy Conway, again, we had that option of Naki Wells if we need him and that's been a fairly you know, consistent change and Naki Wells comes in for one, one week. Uh, and then if it's a short turnaround, Tommy Conway comes in, it's been the other way around as well. So you let me know. What I'm, I'm quite torn on the team. George Tanner as well, with Ross McCrory come in. 
it's very, very undecided in my head in terms of who will start for British City. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. It was a very impressive victory last time out for City against Leicester. But this notion that British City were brilliant and so far superior to Leicester and dominant in the game that I've been hearing, it's just utterly not true. Leicester were really good in possession and the build-up and the patterns were all very nice and pretty. But ultimately, they just lacked that killer edge in the final third and actually got quite unlucky and if Jamie Vardy has his shooting boots on we're probably 3-0 down and we're not having this conversation Bristol City probably lost 3-0 the scoreline is very damaging to us uh, and we're not talking about how it was a brilliant performance but it was a win it was three points and ultimately against a side like Leicester and Leeds and Ipswich and Southampton you're gonna have to ride your luck at times and Bristol City certainly did that and we were again clinical on the chance that did come to us however it's not gonna be the same game and whether we stick with that five at the back against the you know, lesser side in Plymouth. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how their Manning adapts and his, his game plan, because we know he does adapt his game plan, if it, even if the formation doesn't change, uh, to suit um, and to face up to face up against this Plymouth on our side. Last time we played against Plymouth, it was a very, very dominant victory for British City. It was 4-1 at Ashton Gate in the end against a very weakened Argyle side, weirdly enough, put out by Stephen Schumacher that day. It was still Nigel Pearson in charge for City that day. So both teams have change managers, um, one because we made the decision to and one who jumped ship. But it will be very interesting to see how both sides face off against each other and how Liam Manning faces off against Ian Foster tomorrow. I think Bristol City will have to take the game to Plymouth. I think we have to make sure we get an early goal and just completely suck the confidence out of Plymouth and make sure the home fans are in not a nasty way. Hopefully this doesn't come across as, but we just have to make sure the home fans turn against Ian Foster. That's the only way I think we're going to really go and take massive control of the game. Uh, I think possession will be something that we have quite a bit of tomorrow and we showed that against Leicester. We weren't afraid to play at the back when we needed to. We mixed it up a little bit as well, but when we needed to, we definitely looked comfortable in playing out the back. So I think we'll have to do the same thing and hopefully that pressure on Ian Foster just, just ramps up a little bit and get, we get an early goal. And then from there on, if it's, if things turn at home park, hopefully Bristol City can then take complete advantage and maybe score a couple more and Hopefully, it's a good day out. It's never that easy, though, is it? It's just not that easy. And Plymouth are desperate for a result. Of course, they are. They are well in the mix of this relegation battle. And Bristol are going to have to be very, very careful now we approach this one. So for that reason, I'm going to go for a tight, tight game. And ultimately, I think Plymouth's attacking quality is going to also kind of cancel out our attacking quality as well. I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have large dominance over the game in terms of possession and control, but I think Plymouth's quality are going forward, Morgan Whitaker, Mustafa Bundu, Ryan Hardy, Ballymumba, etc., etc., are going to be enough um, with the extra motivation of this is one of their, this is one of their more winnable games coming up to the end of the season. Um, I think this is going to be this is going to be a real, real tough game for Bristol City. So that for that reason, I'm going to go for a two-two draw, pretty entertaining one. Uh, be, let me know, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and leave your score predictions down there as well. That is it for this match preview. If you have enjoyed it, hit like. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Anne Harris Show, which have more Bristol City content in the future. I will catch you all after Plymouth, hopefully for a match review, uh, if we haven't lost 3-0 by then. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Keep safe and I'll catch you all later. Cheers.